Hello everyone. In this video I'll be showing you the basics of creative mode and world edit. Normally you are in survival or adventure mode and when you open your inventory you can see it looks like this. There's another game mode called creative. If you open your inventory while in creative mode you'll instead see that it's got all of the blocks in the game uh, which is organized by tabs and you could also go to your normal inventory at the bottom right and there's also a search part of the inventory at the top right so you could type in whatever block you want rather than scrolling through the lists. You can click on any of these blocks and bring them over to your hotbar or you could also shift click or middle click them to bring a whole stack of them. While you're in creative mode however you don't run out of resources so it doesn't matter how many you have and you can drag anything back into the inventory to delete them. While in creative mode, you can also just walk up to a block and middle click it and it will add it to your hotbar or select it if it's already in your hotbar. This way you don't have to go back in your inventory to find all the blocks that you're working with. Creative mode also grants you the ability to fly. If you double click space, then you'll start flying. And if you hold space while flying, you'll go up. If you hold shift, you go down. You could use your W, A, S, and D keys to move like you normally would. And you can also hold left control if you want to go faster while moving in those directions. And you'll also notice that you're missing your hearts and your hunger bar. So if you drop out of the sky by double tapping space again, you won't take any damage by hitting the ground. Now let's move on to world edit. The first thing you'll need to do is open up your chat and type in the command slash slash wand. This will give you a wooden axe, which acts as a wand, and as you can see, if you left click, it'll select the first position, right click, select the second position, and you can make a cuboid out of those two positions. Now that you have this area selected, which you can't see, but you know where you started, and then you could do a whole bunch of commands, such as slash slash set, which will set anything to the block that you specify. This could, of course, be three-dimensional as well, so it doesn't just have to be that one bit, and you could set this whole cuboid to dirt. You can also use slash slash replace to replace only the blocks that you specify within the selected area with whatever extra block you specify. So in this case, I only want to replace dirt with glass, and those middle blocks, even though they're part of the selection, will be ignored. You can also easily delete your selection by setting everything to air. And if you don't like those changes, you can do slash slash undo, and of course there's a slash slash redo. Now let's say you have a complex structure that you don't want to rebuild because it would take too long. It is possible to copy and paste, so you have to select the area that encompasses whatever it is that you're trying to copy. So make sure you get the whole thing. Then find a place next to that object and do slash slash copy. Make sure you remember where you were relative to that object because it's copying it based on your location. Then move yourself to the place that you want to paste it. Do a slash slash paste. And there it is. So notice that it was pasted exactly relative to me, including by height. If you have something copied in your clipboard, not only can you do the slash slash paste command, but you can also rotate it using the slash slash rotate and then the amount of degrees that you want. So now my clipboard is 90 degrees rotated to the right. I can do slash slash paste. And you'll see that it's the same thing, but rotated 90 degrees. Same thing with slash slash rotate 180. It'll flip it around backwards. And notice it's always staying relative to my position. It's also possible to modify your selected region by using the expand command. So in this case, I want to encompass this whole thing, and I've only selected the lapis lazuli blue layer at the bottom. So I expand 10 blocks up, and you'll see that not only did it encompass the lapis, but it also went up another 10 blocks from the original selection. World Edit also has a few built-in shapes. 
So here I'm going to type in H sphere for hollow sphere. You could also just do sphere. And whenever I type it in, it gives me the instructions on what to do, and it gives a little description as well. So I also need to plug in whatever block the H sphere is going to be made out of, and the radius of this sphere. You can find all of the shapes and the lesser used commands for world edit at the following link. World Edit also allows you to create tools out of other objects. So right now I'm holding a wooden shovel and I want to turn it into a brush. So I do slash brush and I want the brush to make spheres. Let's say those spheres are made out of grass. Now whenever I use this tool in my hand and right click, it will make a small sphere of the radius I selected of grass. This makes building large natural areas very easy. You can also set your brush to smooth out areas, so if the spheres don't look natural enough, then you do slash brush smooth, and then you right click on the areas that look a little bit too artificial. Creative mode gives you access to unlimited resources and flight, which makes building much easier. And world edit gives you access to commands and large region selections which make building large structures significantly easier. All of the world edit information can be found on the wiki which is posted here. And I hope this video helped you further develop your own virtual worlds.